This is the most epic GTK theme manager you can get right now. This is Evolve version 1.4 and it literally feels like magic. For starters, you get adaptive theming, which is basically extracting the colors of your current wallpaper and applying it to the active GTK theme. And by GTK theme, I mean the GNOME shell, GTK3, GTK4, all of it. And then you get the option for editing the colors of the GTK theme according to your taste. And of course, all the basic features like applying GTK4 theme, flat pack theme, or creating your own theme pack by mixing and matching themes. But with the version 1.4, there are some big updates. First is the all new backup option. We all have faced this problem right previously whenever you switch to a different operating system or just think of starting fresh. Uh, for example, you just reinstalled your GNOME best distro, but then you realize you have to manually set everything up in order to make your current GNOME installation look exactly the same like you had previously. This problem is completely solved by Evolve with the introduction of configs. You get the all new config tab where you can just extract the config and apply it on a different system. And it's not just for backing up, you can also use it for sharing your look and feel with someone else. Okay, let me show you. Okay, this is the config page which keeps all the related information and lets you manage them. Now, uh, they are all disabled. The reason is I don't have the pen drive connected to the system. So I can just update the location to somewhere else which is currently available from my system. So let's select uh, documents let's go for pictures it doesn't have any config file over there so if I run backup it will just take some few seconds and it will back up all the required data so currently I have installed themes turned on installed icons installed extensions 80 plus theme wallpaper album and more now what I am going to do is basically let's go to extensions and I'm going to turn off or just uninstall all the extensions that I currently have. So this is user themes removed, uninstall, and then I'm just going to open the dot themes directory. Okay, I'm going to delete the 80 plus theme that was installed. I'm going to remove uh, the dot icons folder, the dot themes folder. So where is dot themes? And also, I'm going to remove the current GTK4 theme, which is kept inside .config slash GTK4. Basically, it's like installing this on a completely freshly installed operating system or a different operating system. Actually, I've also thought of using them in the future theming videos which I release. So it will reduce the duration of the video drastically so we can just focus on the other stuff. Because with this one config.zip file, you will get all the required extensions, Groom shell theme, GTK3 and 4 themes and more. So I'll just provide the config file and you can just download it and apply it with Evolve. You can also toggle stuff on or off according to your requirement. So if you don't like the wallpaper, you can just skip installing it. So currently, uh, this is a wallpaper. I'm going to change it to something else for example this one and let us refresh this page and and all the wallpapers will be available as you can see okay now let's go to config and let's click on apply config it's present inside pictures this is the config.zip file Let's open it and as you can see you get all the required options that is uh, including the Evolve app data. So I'm also going to change some informations inside the Evolve app. So if I go to settings and I can I can change some of the other informations for example uh, respect Gnome UI, scale up, improve contrast. I turn all these on and if I apply config and go to pictures and apply the config turn on the evolve app data now it's not perfect of course the gnome ui part and i'm also considering to remove that option because it seems like none of y'all really care about that respect gnome ui part so it's it's just about the app features so it would be great to have its own user interface but at the same time kind of respect the gnome gtk3 uh, or the gtk4 theme colors so it blends well with the system but anyway let us replace and as you can see it starts applying and one by one you will get all the uh, prompts for installing so 
just click on install to get the required extensions back installed over here and as you can see slowly and slowly the theme is getting applied one by one and the config has been applied so I can exit it from here if I open uh, the settings files all the apps you will notice that the theme is again applied and if you head over to dot themes folder you will also notice that all the themes are available again so it's just with the click of a button everything is applied even in the evolve app data as you can see all of the data are uh, are replaced so improve contrast we turned it on scale up respect gnome ui all of these were turned on and all of them turned off there is also another option available which is the auto run backup as you can see the last backup was at 1536 and i can just turn on auto run backup and if i just close the app and restart evolve you will notice it launches normally but in the background it does all the hard work of backing up the theme it has zero effect on the launch experience I have talked a little bit about how Evolve does this in the performance section so do check it out. Now if I head over to config you will notice that the last backup was at 15.42 which is one minute earlier. So if I just close Evolve and restart Evolve again, head over to config, the last backup again changes to 15.43. It does all the work in the background without affecting the application performance. Now there is also another option which is the background update. If I turn it on, it basically keeps the entire user interface responsive. While you back up, the user interface actually becomes unresponsive in order to prevent uh, memory leaks. So if I run it, as you can see, you can't click on any other place. After it is run complete, completely, then you can do it. Now if you turn on background update, it does all the work in the background and keeps the app responsive. So if I run back up, so as you can see, last updated at 15.44. Okay, now let's talk about the next feature. That is the all new extensions tab. Okay, I'm pretty sure you have faced this problem earlier and you probably face it now, is different apps for doing different stuff in Chrome all related to theming or setting the look of GNOME. You have GNOME tweaks for setting all the basic stuff and then you have Evolve for doing all the advanced theming and everything. You have the extensions app for managing the extensions. You get another app for downloading stuff from the internet that is related to extensions. And of course, you also can go directly to the browser and install extensions from there. But what Evolve is actually trying to aim is to become that only app which you would need for all of these theming purposes. Starting with the inclusion of extensions. Okay, let me show you again. Okay, the extension tab, of course, shows you all the related information uh, according to the installed uh, extensions, the shell extensions. And of course, you can turn them off and on directly from here. For example, Arc menu is enabled as you can see, it is enabled here. I can directly turn it off from within my app. And it is instant. So you turn it off or on, it happens instantly. Also, you get all the related information here. Not the complete information, but some information. For example, you get the details, the version number of the current installed um, shell extension and if you want to get more details you can definitely click on it and it fetches the information from the internet and shows it and as you can see it is quite fast in fetching all the information and it is definitely faster than the one you get on the direct website of GNOME shell extensions. So uh, there are also some other options that you can access for example you can uninstall the extension and and also you can change other settings by clicking this it opens the preferences of uh, arc menu and it lets you edit the options accordingly now let us uninstall and as as you can see it uninstalls the arc menu now i'm going to show you something else let's go back and as you can see here's a new option which is the install new button it opens this page which basically lets you search the gnome shell extension website and install stuff from there for example i want to reinstall arc menu so i'll just search for arc menu and it will show me all the results directly from the gnome shell extension website and it is super fast 
If I click on Arc Menu, it shows instantly all the required information and you can directly install it from here. And as you can see, it installs properly. Now let's go back. And if we refresh the page, the extension page, it again shows that Arc Menu is currently installed. So if you open it, you will get the same information fetched from the internet. When version number is not fetchable, then it tells you that it is not compatible. So it also handles exceptions really well and errors. So uh, as of now, for example, the desktop icons, it does not have any version number. The Ubuntu app indicators also don't have version number. So if I open the uh, Ubuntu app indicator from here, you will notice that it is shown as incompatible because it cannot fetch all the required information from the internet so it shows that and the same goes for the ubuntu doc so these are some minor problems that are present now these now i don't think they are uninstallable or are they uninstallable let us see by opening extensions so yeah as you can see you can't remove them uh, directly even inside the extensions app you cannot actually remove them so user extensions can be removed but not these for the same reason you don't get the option over here okay next let us talk about performance like i mentioned earlier that if you turn on auto backup which is going to run all the backup in the background then uh, it is actually going to use a lot of resources because backup involves copying all the data in the dot themes directory dot icons wallpapers and everything and then also generating the config and again zipping all the files together to create the final config.zip file which if ran on the same thread where the ui rendering is done would affect the startup performance and would make the ui kind of laggy and the animations not so smooth so the backup process is actually ran as an isolate in the background so it does not affect the startup performance so if i change the location again for example if i go to documents and save it over here and turn on background update i mean auto run backup so now if i close the app and try to launch it again now if I start the app, as you can see, there is zero impact on the performance. So if I head over to the .configs directory, uh, you, you will notice that it was last updated at 11.47. So the update happens in the background, but it does not affect the startup performance. The extensions tab is also very well optimized. So if you search for an extension, the results appear really fast. So if I search for Arc Menu, as you can see, the results appear super fast. Now, if I click on it, it appears, it opens the page instantly. It's not like it's opening a different website or web page like it happens in the official GNOME Shell extension installation. But however, it is just super fast and super smooth. Same if I search for something else, for example, user themes. As you can see, it opens up instantly to show all the required information. The search also involves getting all the JSON file from the internet and again uh, laying the widgets accordingly. So it also is actually run as an isolate so it doesn't affect the UI performance. The effect it had on the UI performance was minimal but at the same time I thought of using isolate for smoother performance. Okay, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one.